years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, Al in Homosassa. What's going on, brother? It's, isn't it wonderful? I went ahead and invested in your uh, Tiger Dollars, <laughs> and I went ahead and got the gold report <laughs> for a year, and, and also your, morning, your, your call letter and stuff like that. Like that and I got over a fifty percent return in one day, not counting uh, everything else. But I just want to thank you. Tom's not perfect, but he tells you how to put your stops in, and he keeps your losses small. You can take your small losses, but then all of a sudden you'll be like Dave Root, and you'll hit a home run. I mean, a big home run. Yeah. And put the money in your pocket. Okay, I mean, brother. I You're awesome, man. Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, Tigers? This is Jacob Shoup. Uh, today we have a nice up market. Um, the DIA going straight up from the morning, NDX, similar kind of pattern. The Q's, similar as well. And uh, GDX has been cooking recently, and that is at the expense of the DXY, so the dollar essentially. As someone mentioned in the den, it had been, you know, I mean, from this morning, I mean, we really had a steep decline going on here. Um, it went down uh, past the 101 mark, was kind of flirting with 10, just 100 in general. Um, really tried um, for the past few hours to get back up over that 101 mark, and it did. And we'll see if that holds in through the rest of the day. But the, the dollar has, getting, has been getting absolutely smoked. Um, that's obviously great for gold. Um, so we'll see what that kind of has in store. Um, we can look at Steel Dynamics. Um, so it did end up, let me see here. Just do year to date. It did end up testing that level, like we were saying the other week, um, and then it did reject it. But it's not on a lot of volume. It might get back down to that area, and and we'll see what happens. You know, as I always say, I, I loved trading this stock quite a bit, um, and so we'll see. Steel's also at like, I guess like a cyclical high for the industry uh, right now. So it may be, um, I don't know if I would ever suggest right now is a good time to get into steel in general just because of the cyclical nature of the industry um, but it is making that that nice um, you know it tested rejected it'll probably retest again so um, it's interesting is Volvo has knocked it out of the park today um, truck maker Volvo post record Q1 as sales and margins beat forecasts Post 45% jump in preliminary Q1 earnings. Um, their EBIT is at 18.4 uh, billion crowns versus, uh, I mean, that knocked their forecast out of the park. Um, full earnings will be on April 20th, and uh, it's a nice little bump in it. They've been really focusing a lot on making, I mean, they have forever, um, but cars, uh, excuse me, trucks, um, cargo and all that. Uh, and they've done quite well. Um, they're also doing decently regarding like the EV market as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to follow along and kind of see, uh, see what happens with them. Um, in some news, I know Twitter is no longer publicly traded, but there has been some interesting stuff going on. Um, Twitter announced earlier that they're gonna merge with eToro, not merge with eToro, but uh, rather have an eToro plugin um, for their application. So let me see here. Let's pull this over for y'all. This is neat. I mean, this headline says it pushes app into finance, but really what it is, I think it, it, Musk wants this to be a one and done place where you stop, right? And this is also the concept in general with like Web3, okay? And if you're not familiar with like what Web3 is, um, the way that it would you know, practically be uh, implemented is it's, it's a one place to go. So Reddit kind of tried to run with that as like the front page of the internet a while ago, um, but obviously there's, you know, it's just really a message board at the end of the day, a forum board. Twitter with Musk implementing this is it's huge. So, I mean, you'll, you'll be able to trade stocks based on it. Um, you'll be able to trade crypto on it. Uh, Twitter has a really cool kind of feature. 
uh, essentially, where if you put a money sign in front of a ticker, it'll link it. It's like a hashtag, but for stocks. Um, so, and this is interesting too, is it's coming in at a time where, um, how do you call it? Uh, of course, I'm blanking on the name of it. Give me a second. The, uh, <laughs> It's basically like a medium where you where you post articles um, in behind paywalls. Uh, but anyways, they came out yesterday saying that they were going to compete with Twitter and allowing you know kind of short form um, and then message scroll down board. So Twitter has also announced that they're going to be um, implementing something called monetization, where you can put your posts um, essentially behind a paywall, which will be massive. Um, again, not publicly traded, but. Um, what I think is interesting about this is, you know, I, I haven't been on Twitter in a long time, but I've recently been on uh, TFNN's Twitter, um, and I've noticed that you have long form posts now on it. And this is getting away from the, the core of what Twitter was and kind of how it carved its market share to begin with. And I think what that does is it leaves opportunities for smaller uh, platforms that have been trying to compete with Twitter to get a leg in. So in the next, in the next few years, it might be interesting uh, to see things like Mastodon um, and, and some other message boards that have tried to, or excuse me, social media apps that have tried to um, emulate original Twitter. I'll see how uh, they kind of get a percentage of the market share out of it. Um, but it is, it is pretty interesting to see uh, this kind of development for it. Um, and I think really like this is the future for a lot of these major tech platforms, all your social media platforms um, are going to need to start integrating. I mean, this kind of competition here, um, they're going to need to start integrating more and more features. Facebook did it with Marketplace, which is pretty huge in a way of like cutting down eBay a little bit in some capacity, um, not in every way. Um, but, you know, this kind of diversif diversification of, of what the platform does and what you're allowed to do uh, is, is pretty uh, interesting. So let's see, obviously CPI was lower yesterday, which is huge, but I'm, you know, one of the things that was interesting to me is when you read the CPI, and we'll get more into this when we come back, um, but you had fuel, oil, and gasoline um, extremely low. I mean, you had massive negative growth for them, right? And this was, you know, weighting CPI quite a bit. Not much else was budging. And what I'm concerned about in some ways, and I obviously could be entirely wrong on this, um, but with with the new OPEC cuts, and we might not see it until after May, um, but we, you know, might end up getting higher gas. I mean, we've deployed gas prices. We've deployed a lot of the strategic reserves already, especially in March, which obviously none of this OPEC revelation came to light until uh, April. And uh, through March, um, there was a deployment of the strategic petroleum reserve. Let's see if I can pull it up for you right about here, and this was in March. And so whether or not that you know, suppressed prices greatly at the pump, uh, you know, we'll stand to see. Um, with the increase in OPEC, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more when we come back, um, we're, we might not see too much increase until after May, as what the Saudis do essentially is form contracts a few months out for delivery of supply. Um, we'll talk about that a little more. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. What's going on, folks? All right, so yeah, when before we went to the break, talking a little bit about um, just kind of the future of, of, of gas and energy. Um, on this kind of announcement by OPEC, uh, you know, gosh, it's great, great little trading vehicle from our friends over at Direction. Um, went up quite a bit. Um, I think, I, I think on the on the broader scale, what you know, and again, this is a few months out. America will, North America will still receive its oil up until you know, at, at its set rate up until uh, till May. Um, but you have Russia kind of having issues producing so much, and then you're also getting to a point where Asia is now cycling in to using quite a bit of gas. Um, so uh, you know. You can look at it for, for China, for instance, the total crude imports in the first quarter were about, um, excuse me, 136.6 million uh, tons, and that's 520, excuse me, 52.3 million um, tons or 12.3 million barrels per day just in March alone for that. Um, everyone right now is racing to get the oil they can before prices really adjust at it. And this is, again, through this uh, big kind of campaign OPEC has had of trying to keep oil prices, uh, you know, per barrel within some some boundary. Obviously, this isn't, you know, phenomenal. And I, I do think that um, if prices increase some substantial amount, you're going to see a CPI that comes back and and it might be a bit higher um, than we anticipated um, and won't follow this trend. But we'll see on that. Um, give me a second here. There's another one. I'll have to get the um, the uh, the chart for you as well. But essentially, um, at least over the past month for the CPI, um, out of house eating has gone up. So expenditure on on foods like fast foods, restaurants has actually increased, which was really bizarre. And um, so I, I don't know. I don't think we're really like out of the neck of the woods on this yet. It doesn't necessarily mean that rates will increase, as we've been saying that kind of. The uh, banks stopping their um, loans, or at least kind of stinting them quite a bit, um, will might suppress inflation. But it's just kind of a bizarre thing going on. Additionally, like on that note as well, uh, this is this is a horrible chart. But what, what this is showing is basically wage decrease, right? And here we are for March. You have a nice decrease of 1.6 percent. Um, at the same time, you're getting uh, almost, uh, if I recall correctly, it was a 1.2% increase 
in eating out of the house. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, <laughs> there's a lot going on, um, especially with you know how the market's going to take what what CPI um, was having to say. So, um, yeah. We'll just see what April has to do, and, and really I think the June CPI will be pretty interesting as well. Um, all right. Another interesting thing too, um, just we'll just t uh, tap it in quickly, um, there's been a lot of uh, large firms getting more exposure um, to crypto right now. Um, a lot of your funds um, that have to do with crypto with your indirect exposure are getting some nice bumps. And, and recently today, the London Stock Exchange announced that we'll be launching the trading of uh, Bitcoin futures and options. So that's something for the crypto guys out there to keep in mind, which is quite interesting. Um, one that I wanted to look at was Anheuser-Busch. So you, let's see here, let's take it a two week. So yeah, there was, essentially they've had a ad campaign that came out. Um, one of the interesting issues Anheuser Bush has come across, and, and this happens with any kind of large company, um, is their market share among the newer generations, right? So, like, you know, there's definitely not a lot of people in my generation who drink Bud Light at all. Um, we're heavily seltzer peoples, um, and I'm not sure that Bud has enough exposure into that, but they've been essentially doing a few campaigns. Um, they had a few celebrities. Uh, younger celebrities uh, drinking their product and ads, and they just recently did one, um, and it did not go over very well with um, some Americans. Uh, there's just, and this just shows, again, not getting political at all with this, but it just shows there's a large divide between what some people think is socially acceptable and what isn't. And uh, there's been a lot of fuss about it in the news. Um, sales were way down. You know, we'll see what their, you know, next quarter, obviously we just started Q2, but, um, you know, we'll see what that holds. Uh, but I've seen a lot of talk about people trying to figure out how to short uh, Anheuser-Busch, and I, it doesn't make much sense to me. So you've, like, we go to a monthly chart on this. They, you know, basically released this ad sometime around here, right? And it didn't get a lot of traction until about this major sell-off point. And yes, it's been, you know, steadily declining, but if, you know, the way that I see it is it's not it's not low enough one to to get in if you want to look at it on the long side of this. But I also don't think this has much more energy to go further down. What this reminds me of a lot is um, when Gillette, and I think this was in 2020, um, Gillette released an advertisement that was a little bit more socially charged at the time, and they had a massive, massive backlash. Um, obviously now Procter & Gamble is a huge company. Um, they did receive somewhat of a hit um, regarding this, but um, it, it recovers on it. And I'm not really sure that this will be a long-term thing for Bud. I certainly, me personally, would not short this. Um, but on the long end of it, I, again, bring up that issue is that they are not super popular with uh, young people whatsoever. If you hold Anheuser-Busch, I mean, if I held it, uh, I would just keep holding it. I wouldn't do anything with it whatsoever. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's it really is interesting to see this this divide now, and, and we'll see if new products come out uh, that start reflecting uh, more of the, of the, the divide essentially that we have in America based on social situations and political so, uh, situations. You see that a lot with um, uh, with tech companies and social media companies. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if you know daily household products like uh, you know like beer or drink in general um, get impacted by that. Another one that had a lot of exposure today was Alibaba. And so it was SoftBank who sold these guys off. And uh, it, what blew my mind about that is everyone's saying like, okay, uh, you know, Baba is overvalued or something like that. That's why SoftBank sold it. But SoftBank does not do very well for themselves. They, they have uh, pretty continually made pretty bad investment decisions. Um, I mean, just recently they, they failed to even uh, published their, their quarterly earnings and it got fined something like astronomical. Um, and the way that I see it is what SoftBank, is, this, is, this is more of a reflection on SoftBank than it is this equity Baba itself. Um, I think a lot of this was basically selling off at some kind of increase. Um, I mean, you know, you had a, like a nice jump 
around this area, March 24th, of, you know, I mean, you get 86 high volume all the way up, skyrocketing past the 100 level. Um, yes, you get the sell off today and some, and some scared investors selling off as well with SoftBank. But again, I think this is far more of a reflection on SoftBank than it is BABA. Um, so we'll see, BABA is doing that split. Um, and we'll see how that turns out. But again, SoftBank, I don't know if you guys remember Zoom Pizza, but the whole idea, this was like in I don't know, 2018. Uh, but the idea was that these guys were going to have robots um, bake pizza in, inside of the robot's cavity and then deliver it to people. And SoftBank invested like $318 million in that. Obviously, it just totally went kaput. But this is the kind of thing that's going on. And again, failure for them to, to post uh, their earnings when they, when they needed to is just another example that this is not BABA. This is SoftBank. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the inventor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. What's going on? Um, okay, so it's interesting. This is, I want to show you guys this. I don't know if I flashed it earlier. It's the weekly change in initial jobless claims by state, so this was released uh, like two days ago. Um, California's huge, far more increase, uh, far greater increase in this. You had New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Texas, Ohio, interestingly enough, is seeing an increase, um, excuse me, a, a decrease in jobless claims. Um, so we still, you know, what the Fed's doing is essentially working. You're getting large jobless claims. Um, you are getting a, dep uh, a, a depressing of wages, and yet we're still seeing just kind of an, a, a CPI that was just, you know, 0.1% under what the projected was. Um, again, and that's with that kind of gas phenomenon. It'll be interesting to see what happens. On, on California's note, this is something interesting for anyone kind of living out there, or just people who are interested in some of the uh, housing 
uh, issues. I don't know if Tom spoke about this, but this is a California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Loan. This is, this is just kind of interesting from a, a strategy perspective. And so the idea is, is they'll, they'll give you a grant, essentially, or a loan, right, the government. There's a, there's a fund that exists. And um, essentially, you'll buy the home, and all you have to do is pay it back uh, 20% of the sale price when you, when you sell the home um, or when you refinance, which is, which is really interesting. And the idea is to get it so more people can access homes there. Um, I think what's huge about that is it's going to drive prices up for sure. Um, and if you're like a broker out there, a real estate agent, this is probably pretty, pretty sweet for you. Um, but it's just interesting to see how different areas are trying to deal with, um, you know, home issues. Uh, in St. Pete, it's, it's pretty expensive to get anything. Um, uh, you, you know, I have friends who are in pretty not okay apartments paying about $1,900 a month, $2,000 a month, uh, when about six years ago, seven years ago, um, they were something like 900 bucks a month. Um, so it's interesting to see kind of how they're going to pivot. It's interesting that you pay the loan back 20, 20% of the new value. I think that's a little bit novel maybe. Um, and if I'm missing something, please let me know. But I think that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Um, all right, let's see. Moderna has some interesting kind of things. And this is something I was always interested in when, uh, during COVID when they were releasing the mRNA vaccines. Because I had always heard um, that mRNA was going to be the absolute future, especially for cancer, right? Because you can, you can really alter essentially what your D, how your DNA is coding via the RNA. And so Moderna came out today saying it hopes to offer new vaccines for cancer, heart disease, and other conditions by 2030. Uh, this is pretty neat. Um, one of the major issues, you know, with, with cancer is a lot of it is so, like, individualized. And what I mean by that is every kind of cancer kind of affects something differently in, in, in the way that it kind of pops up. And so having something that's kind of agile like mRNA vaccines uh, will be Pretty interesting to see how that works. So let's take a look at this a little bit. Um, when Burton no, uh, noted that advancements in messenger RNA technology since the outset of the COVID pandemic have ushered, ushered in a golden age for new vaccines, um, Moderna hopes to offer new set of life-saving vaccines targeting cancer, heart disease, and other conditions by 2030. Um, the spokesperson confirmed. Um, uh, Burton said that he's confident that the vaccines will be ready by the end of the decade adding that Moderna could possibly offer them in as little as five years. Um, this is a quote, I think, uh, that Moderna, that we, Moderna, have learned in recent months, is that if you ever thought that mRNA was just for infectious diseases or just for COVID, the evidence now is that that's absolutely not the case. And that's interesting because, again, I, I think the big thought about it so many years ago before it was implemented for the first time with COVID um, was the idea of, of stunting uh, things like cancer. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, we'll kind of see how that, that pans out as well. Uh, and there's going to be such a, such a large market in these kind of therapeutics as time goes on. Um, and so it'll be pretty cool to see. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about, um, I have a friend. Uh, he lives in Colorado. I just visited him, visited him recently. Um, uh, he had a wedding, actually. And he manages a grow operation. And uh, for... Uh, for marijuana, right? Obviously, it's all legal there. What is interesting is that for so long, this, these stocks have not been doing well whatsoever. Um, I, I think we're going to see a massive slowdown, especially with uh, this kind of reeling in from private equity with everything going on. And obviously, cannabis stocks don't really get, or excuse me, companies don't really get um, access to any funding from from banks. Um, but let's take a look at some of these here and um, take a look at uh, Aurora first, which was one of the ones that was, you know, just going, just really running at the top of this thing. But I mean, you're, what you're going to see here with all these cannabis stocks is a really slow decline here, a nice slope, okay, where you're sitting at something like 63 cents. Um, so this is, this is Aurora. We can take it a uh, organogram, let's see here. OGI, same kind of idea. This had a little bump up on, on volume, but that's not general for the rest of these stocks at all. Um, you take a look at Cureleaf. Oh. 
same kind of deal. Um, you know, these stocks really bumped up quite a bit, especially during like the pandemic. Uh, and this was a mix of the hype surrounding them, uh, as well as, you know, um, people staying at home, right? And these kind of vice stocks kind of go up during that time period. Um, but I think as long as private equity is not deploying as much capital into these kind of uh, entities, um, and as long as it stays federally illegal, there's just, I, I just think these guys are super unattractive, or excuse me, unattractive. I have some friends who are still holding from like pretty high highs, and that's, that's sad to see. Um, it is the sixth largest cash crop in America, so that is something to look into, but I, I think the way that I would look at this more um, is seeing the kind of peripherals. Like if you wanna get exposure into it, and I've, I did this in the past, and I'm, I'm kind of out of everything, um, position wise, but when exposure to the cannabis industry, I'm saying all the peripherals are what you would want to do. You know, the cleaning technology, the fertilizing technology, um, but in that same vein, you know, things that aren't uh, going to be purchased, you know, every so often, such as like lights and equipment, something to keep in mind as well is you have a ton of people um, shutting down their operations. Um, and they're selling off that stuff to kind of just get a little bit out or, or cover losses um, in whichever way. The company that my friend works for in Colorado, they laid off exactly half of their staff, I would say something like six months ago. And he's telling me is that it is pretty standard. Uh, one of the largest um, expenditures, I think it is the largest expenditure in, um, in weed production is the labor. And um, after a certain point, it's just, you, you know, you, you got to, cut people out. Um, and if you can't manage with a lower force, um, you're going to go under. And so, you know, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see. I just, I had a, I had a buddy of mine the other day asking me what I thought on these weed stocks, which is why I bring this up. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Um, we're going to slide a little bit here into, um, when we get back from the break, I know we talk about it often, but AI, and this is with chat GPT, but any other things that are developing in this section as well. Um, Alibaba, again, we'll get a little bit back into this after the break, but remember uh, a few weeks ago when I was on, I was talking about that open letter that I was asking um, developers to slow down. And this is an interesting reason why we might not want to slow down. Um, and it's, it's namely competition uh, from nation states and uh, foreign enterprise. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you have any questions, Go ahead and ask me in the den and I will answer them. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! What's going on, folks? Uh, appreciate Jimmy in the den there. Um, all right, so, yeah, when, before we left, uh, we were talking about kind of the uh, big, big increase um, in uh, development for uh, AI. And, uh, you know, this isn't specifically, AG, specifically AGI, um, but we are going to get to that point. So Alibaba is going to roll out its rival to chat GPT across all of its products. Uh, so let's see here. We are at a technological watershed moment driven by generative AI and cloud computing. And businesses across all sectors have started to embrace intelligence transformation to stay ahead of the game. That's Daniel Zhang, chairman and CEO of Alibaba Group. Obviously, Alibaba has... Um, I mean, a lot of data to pull from on this. And, you know, again, a few weeks ago, I was talking about an open letter uh, to AI developers and AGI developers to kind of slow down um, on the development of this. And, I, you know, there, there are obviously valid reasons for that. Of course, we don't fully understand what the implication is going to be uh, in the economy, what the implication is going to be, um, you know, regarding society in general and how humans interact with each other. But you kind of, you know, it comes at a cost a little bit where you have other nation states and um, certainly foreign enterprises who probably are not going to pull the reins in on that, right? And so, let's see here. So Hong Kong listed shares Alibaba, gained traded more than 3% higher, excuse me, more than 3% higher after the announcement, but it's since paired... Uh, uh, Pardon some gains. Okay. Obviously, we just spoke about that, why that occurred. Uh, shares of Baidu in Hong Kong were down 6%. Um, at the 2023 Alibaba Cloud Summit, the company said it will be rolling out the artificial intelligence powered chatbot into all Alibaba products uh, from enterprise communication to e commerce in the quote near future. No timeline was revealed. This, I mean, it really is revolutionizing how things kind of work. Um, I used the uh, the Bing integration for ChatGPT the other day, and it's pretty stellar. I mean, it's nothing like ChatGPT4 at all, uh, but still, um, it was a far better experience. What I will say, though, is at least for the, the cost of using something like that, it's something like 100 times the cost to use um, uh, a chat, like a language model, AI, um, for searches than it is just like a general Google search. Um, but, you know, one of the things I was looking at last night is I was actually with my uh, my martial arts coach and he also does personal training and he has this one kid who's trying to get into a competition and uh, he's very light uh, he's not a lot of weight for his height and so he needs uh, basically a, a different diet um, to bulk up a little bit and my coach I was sitting there watching him and he typed in you know every feature the guy has how tall he is how much he weighs um, and then, you know, give me a diet to get him to, you know, X amount of weight. And it, it gave him this like two paged in depth kind of response and, uh, outline of what he should do. And he looked at me like with a side eye, kind of smiling. He's like, this would have taken me something like three hours to do in the past. And he's like, I'm reading through it. 
And uh, he's like, this thing's not saying anything wrong. Uh, that's really, you know, super, super impressive. For studying, I think it's massive. Like, if you want to learn anything, you know, asking that chat GPT for, I think the $20 a month is kind of worth it in some capacity. Um, and we're not even getting in to things like artificial general intelligence. And so what happens is when you have these language models and you have learning models and everything, um, when, you know, what, what, what like the Skynet is, is, is a network of different AI models centered around uh, this really strong processor. We're not even close to a point yet. I think there's a lot of like fear that's coming out that's unfounded regarding AGI. I think there certainly is something to be said about, um, you know, a lot of jobs being partially automated um, from something like a language model. But uh, I, I think the strongest computer they have now for artificial general intelligence is in uh, Manchester, UK, and it has something like a million neurons. Humans have trillions. So it, it's not, you know, of course there might be like an efficiency difference, but um, we're, we're not near that yet. Um, let's see here. So the reason why I bring this up as well is because um, Goldman Sachs actually released an article that said generative AI could raise global GDP by 7%. And what generative AI is, is essentially like what I was just talking about, right? Like my coach asking for, you know, a diet plan. So um, this is pretty impressive. It says breakthroughs in generative artificial intelligence have the potential to bring about sweeping changes. We know this um, as tools using advances in natural language processing work their way into businesses and society. They could drive a 7% or almost $7 trillion increase in global GDP and lift productivity growth by 1.5% um, over the 10 year period. Um, this is pretty crazy. The labor displacement is what's interesting. You know, we, for a long time, you know, we, we have a consumption model for a lot of, uh, for, for our economies, essentially, and uh, cheaper labor is always, is always better. Um, we're seeing a massive increase in the global population in, traditionally in industrialized nations, um, without any kind of um, intercession, you get uh, a strict decrease in, in population growth, right? You see it in Japan, it was happening in Western Europe and everything. Um, and so what happens is when you have like, you know, just a burgeoning global economy and economies in, in country, or excuse me, uh, burgeoning population is you get these advanced countries who are making stuff like this that, that really does alleviate some of the labor burden that exists and you start getting massive labor displacement. And it's, it's so like, what do you do in that situation? And, and this is really the major question around it. And if there is gonna be any time that's kind of shaved off from advancing these kind of AIs, it's gonna need to be around that. Like what, what do we essentially do? Um, any, you know, management AIs, if they get good enough in the future, I mean, those will be outsourced to developing countries. Um, production AI, that would be outsourced. So it's kind of like what, what is left uh, for large swaths of the population. And I think that's something that needs to be spoken about. Obviously, you have a lot of different answers to that. There's things like UBI, there's been all the way to like just not even implementing AI. But um, stinting the technology usually doesn't ever work very well. Um, it's just you, you have this Promethean flame and you gotta figure out how not to get burned by it. And uh, I, you know, I trust hopefully that this will be figured out. Um, this is another crazy, two thirds of occupations could be partially automated by AI. Uh, that's, that's pretty nuts, two thirds of occupations. So in addition to job displacement by automation, um, they've been offset by the creation of new jobs and the emergence of new occupations following technological innovations. And this accounts for a vast majority of long run employment growth. Um, Obviously, for example, information technology innovations introduce new occupations such as web page designers, software developers, and digital marketing professionals. Uh, however, all of these guys are going to more or less, uh, a lot of jobs will be, numbers will be lost. The ones that still have software developers, digital marketing, and 
web page design jobs will be far more efficient and make a lot more money. And of course, new jobs will be open with this as well. Um, and so it's not a doomsday thing by any means, but it is something I think we, you know, I have a hunch that we might need to be a little more focused on, on how to adapt to this. Um, and stay tuned, we'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. What's going on, folks? All right, so this, is a, this news is a, a few days old. It's still super interesting. And what this headline is, it says these, it's seven tech stocks command almost 90% of the S&P 500's gains. And as that little part says, it might not be so healthy, the rally. That's pretty phenomenal, honestly. So we can read into it. It says a small grouping of mega cap stocks are behind almost all of the S&P 500's 2023 rally. As investors pile back into stocks battered last year and shun smaller cap stocks amid macroeconomic and banking uncertainty. Uh, the one analyst cautioned about what the concentrated rally means for the market's broader health. I would say, I don't know. That doesn't sound great. Um, this is pretty wild here. Um, incredibly, those seven stocks, and that's, that's going to be Alphabet, uh, Apple, Meta, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Microsoft, and Tesla. They gained more than $2.1 trillion in market capitaliza capitalization year to date through Thursday's market close, cumulatively, according to... Uh, to a data set. Incredibly, those seven stocks account for 88% of the S&P's 2023 gains, with the index up $2.4 this year and 7% overall. Um, 
In a recent note to clients, LPL financial strategist uh, Buchbinder said narrow leadership in the S&P reflects a less healthy rally than one with broader participation, uh, pointing out that there's a lack of technical basis for the recovery as forward-looking metrics for tech remain stretched thin and especially, and I was mentioning this a little while ago, but tech a lot of times is based on the discounted cash flow. And, you know, obviously rates might go down at the end of this year, but there's been talk, especially from the Fed, that they, they may see a recession later in the year. And who's to say banks, especially uh, practices like, you know, funds that are that are extending out to tech companies, um, you know, what are they what are they going to do? Uh, super interesting to think about. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. You know, act accordingly to that, I suppose. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'll be filling in for Tom tomorrow and Monday. If you have any questions, you can always email me. And um, have a great rest of your day, folks.